Okay, I guess can we we can start. Uh, thank you everyone for uh, for joining us for participating to this uh, learning talk, uh, in which we will talk about uh, AI and specifically about uh, knowledge AI. Here we have uh, Philippe with us, uh, who is the founder and CTO of Knowledge. Thank you, Philippe. You're welcome, Mario. Nice to meet you as a team. Uh, today, we are facing uh, an epochal turning point in the world of business and education. Artificial intelligence uh, that just a couple of years now was science fiction is uh, now a reality. It is capable of uh, radically transforming business process and the online educator sector. According to Confindustria, which is uh, the general confederation of Italian industry, uh, a 72% of uh, Italian small and medium sized enterprises still show insufficient level of digitalization. Even more significant is uh, the fact that only 6.2% have integrated AI into their uh, processes. This uh, uh, gives us a great opportunity. Today, the adoption of AI can bring enormous benefits, uh, for example, the, for the creation of more sophisticated content, which we'll talk uh, about today, but also the preparation of uh, wonderful presentations of al or also the possibility to make uh, a better decision thanks uh, to the support of uh, this, uh, all of this knowledge that is uh, far beyond our own. So, Philippe, I will start to ask you um, a couple of questions. But first of all, would you like to uh, tell us more something uh, about you? <clears throat> yes, sure. So, um, I'm, uh, I've learned computer science a while ago. It was before in internet and mobile phone, so you can guess my age. Um, and uh, I'm also, so I've been working for American company like Hewlett Packard and some of the uh, network equipment provider to build the internet, by the way. And from time to time, I move up in the value chain. Uh, so uh, starting to implement services on top of internet, like uh, voice over IP, and also uh, move to the uh, music tech, so which is using streaming and download music uh, on top of the internet so to, de to develop something like Spotify, but in white label. And uh, starting in 2018-19, I switched to the head tech uh, with a knowledge project. So I'm a I'm so serial entrepreneur. So knowledge is the four startups that I created, uh, and that's the one that uh, I'm running right now as a CTO. Yeah. What inspired the creation of Knowledge AI, and what are its primary goals and objectives? So just to give you a little bit of history. Story. I think it could be interesting. Um, actually, I changed job in 2018 and learned AI uh, to refresh my mind because when I learned AI at school, it was not at all the same as today or five years ago. Um, but the, after having learned AI, I wanted to share my knowledge to manager and executives. There was already a lot of technical course on AI, but very few for manager and uh, C executive and so on in corporate. So I plan to build an online course, uh, but I realized that it's time consuming and not so easy. So I was asking myself, why not using AI to uh, create that automatically and especially natural language processing to process the text and create a question and so on. So that was the initial idea. So I built the prototype early 2020 uh, and we present that to a trade show. I collect a lot of enthusiasm. So that convinced me to go ahead with a startup ID. That met, give me the opportunity to meet my co-founder as well. So that's good. And after a few years, a few years of research and development, we released last summer Knowledge AI to automate the course creation. And as you will see uh, during the webinar, transform any static document like text, audio or video into a set of interactive material that could be easily pushed to uh, the LMS like Ilias. So, so that, that, that's so the we, essence, I would say. Yeah. Which makes it now easier. And during this, uh, this talk, we will also show a demo 
of the um, uh, plugin, which makes uh, uh, you able to use Knowledge AI in Ilias. But before reaching that point, how does Knowledge AI leverage artificial intelligence to transform static content into a very wonderful interactive learning packages? And what does it set its part from other similar platforms? So, um... First, as I say, we focus on natural language processing. So we are processing text, uh, but when you have audio and video, the, the, they are transcription to get the text uh, from that uh, multimedia file. Then when you are using generative AI, uh, you should really take care about the hallucination. Uh, hallucination is where the uh, large angle model, and I'm pretty sure that most of you have tried ChatGPT, um, if you don't give clear instruction, you can have something that is written, it is grammatically correct, uh, everything looks perfect, but if you dig a little bit into it, you will notice some uh, misinformation, wrong date, wrong person, and so on. So, which is not good for education, of course, because we are supposed to sure. uh, teach the truth. Um, so to do so, and it's one of the uh, different shatter we have, it's we force to use a source document as a ground truth. Uh, and we let the large language model to uh, work on it. So um, it ensures that all the generated text uh, will be aligned with the source document. So we'll not try to invent something. Uh, and also, what is important, will follow the learning objective. So if you have a, a document that is explaining the brain for a K-12 uh, uh, young student, I would say, uh, he will not use sophisticated PhD uh, terms, that uh, medicine terms that you can have on Wikipedia. It will remain a simple explanation to, to, to cope with the uh, source document. So that, that's what makes us uh, different uh, when using the uh, generative AI for education. For a better understanding, could you provide some examples of how Knowledge AI has been used to enhance learning experience in different educational or especially corporate settings? Yes, sure. Um, actually, from a single source document, uh, we generate up to 13 interactive activities. Uh, so there is some activities that are very good for the uh, what we call flip classroom or pre-class. Actually, that's something you can give to the learner in advance. Uh, it it's also works in a corporate world anyway, uh, to engage the learner with the concept that will be uh, addressed during the class or during the, the training session. There is some activities that are really formative. So that's something you it's good for either self-learning or in class to present. And there is other activities that are more uh, f formative, uh, summative, which are good for post-class assessment, for example, to check that the knowledge has been understood. Um, it's applied to both academic and corporate. And I would say it's the tools that we have generated. It is even more suitable for cooperation because it allows subject matter experts to become an instructional designer. So you don't have to back and forth loop with the uh, external people to build the course by just selecting the right document and let the tool propose uh, the activities. It can create a course uh, based on his expertise uh, without external help. So it speed up the course creation within corporation. Great. What are the key features and tools that Knowledge AI offers to content editors and learners? And how do they contribute to a more engaging learning environment? Uh, yes, so <clears throat> from our customer, we, we get a lot of uh, in, uh, engagement with the, uh, I would say the most impressive feature is the interactive video. Um, so on top of the regular videos, there will be a concept definition and quizzes that will be added just to be sure that uh, optionally, if you don't understand something, you can pause the video and get the explanation at the right time when it is says. So there is a time code it is uh, generated, but also to be sure that you follow and to keep you engaged with the video. If it's a video, it starts to be a little bit long. There is a quiz in the middle or at the end of the video. Uh, to be sure that you have get uh, con understood the, the first concepts that are explained. So that, that's um, something which is really appreciated by cooperation because the, the video format is more and more used for micro learning. But uh, even if 
video is more engaging than a static PDF. Having the fact that you can interact with the video, it's something really, um, really powerful. Otherwise, we have other um, uh, activities that are, for example, a glossary that is uh, con generated automatically from the source document with all the definition. There is some game, let's like crossword, write the word. So, uh, and of course, and um, it was at actually back to my initial uh, idea of knowledge, time consuming to create a quiz. So uh, knowledge is creating quiz with uh, true, false, fill the blank, MCQ question with distractors so automatically. Uh, generated like magic from the source document. So that, that's, I would say, the key features that uh, that are helping um, uh, the learner um, to, um, to 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 um, get in more engaged and uh, having more retention on the what they learn. Yeah. So before showing, uh, um, you know, in deep how the really knowledge works in uh, in uh, in Ilias, we show we show the plugin for Ilias now. Um, how does uh, the Knowledge AI plugin uh, for both uh, Ilias and Moodle enhance the integration of interactive lessons uh, within this uh, learning management system? And, and also, what benefit does it offer to both educators and learners? Sure. So, of course, the product has in its own user interface, and we try to make it as intuitive as possible. But as we are an authoring tool, when we generate activities, uh, they have to be downloaded uh, through H5P package or SCORM package to your local computer before being re-uploaded to the ELMS like Ilias or Moodle. So, so we, we, we ask OC Labs to develop for us uh, the plugin, uh, Moodle and Ilias, to get the user experience more fluent, actually. Um, so to be able to, without leaving or switching from one tool to the other, to really start the course creation on the learning management system uh, and get the uh, full course activities um, done thanks to the plugin that are using knowledge underneath, but it's uh, completely hidden from Ilias or Moodle. So, um, thank you, thank you for for choosing OC for the development of these uh, of these plugins. Uh, let's, oh, now, <laughs> let's now let's uh, now show uh, a demo about it. How does it work? Um, mainly, it's uh, very simple. You start by adding a core, uh, a content in Ilias, which can be a video, an audio file, a text, a PDF, and the uh, AI uh, analyzes and generates um, multiple assessments and interactive activities. But let's see how it works. Here I am in Ilias. I have created uh, just a category for you. And here in Add New Item, I click uh, to Knowledge. Um, then uh, let's try with this video one I took from your course we shared yesterday. Uh, so I can create it. Let's go to um, Creation Workflow. And here is where I can upload my file. Um, this is uh, um, where you find the content limitations, but you can see many uh, file type are accepted. Um, then if I go to media source, I can uh, take a new URL uh, or uh, a file from a media pool or from my computer, or I can copy paste a text here. Let's go to file and select my file. This one is uh, OK. I select the uh, language of input. Um, knowledge except um, analyze English content, but also French, Italian, and German contents. Then let's go to create document. You see that uh, um, the transcription is now in progress. And when finished, um, Ilias shows me a pop up saying that the transcription of the video um, finished. Uh, what is the transcription? Uh, simply um, the AI uh, first, uh, the plugin first analyzes the audio in your video and transcript all the text. Uh, from that text, um, you will have several, several objects, but also an interactive video. I'm gonna show you um, how it works when it just finished. 
the transcription has uh, finished you see that uh, um, the pop-up uh, came up and this is the transcription of your video of course it's uh, interesting because you can really go and change your text if uh, the ai somehow uh, misunderstood um, i don't know some specific words or something but for this demo i'm not going to uh, correct uh, anything and let's go to start analyzing the analysis is ready and you can see um what uh, the um, um, what are the results so here there is a summary of your video and the key points that are important uh, now i can confirm review And also I can choose what are the H5P activities that I want to have. For example, high order questions, glossary, conceptual cards, assessment, find the word, and so on. There are many, as you can see, you can choose to disable them if you don't want to have in your final result. Then I can click to generate activities. Activities are now generated, uh, so I can go to content in order to see uh, what knowledge has created. Content is loading and you see all the activities that are here on the left. Let's start. So first of all, you can see that uh, there is uh, our original video and on the video player there are several dots on the timeline. Uh, these dots are interactions for the users and these, uh, let's say dots, but with the inner uh, space uh, empty, um, are questions. Let's see. Um, let's go to the first, uh, okay, it's, it's already arrived, uh, to see the first interaction. You see that there is this plus, I can click, the video stops. And I can see, okay, we're talking about hepatitis C, but what is it? So I have a pop-up explaining me, what is it? Let's go to see the question here. Okay, in the middle, test your knowledge. I can click here and have a question. So you see that my video is not passive anymore, but is, you know, interactive. Okay, um, in the questions that you'll see um, uh, also later, you see that uh, uh, Knowledge has created uh, other options that are invented, of course. So the, the correct one is uh, the one that uh, understood from your video. Uh, others are just, uh, um, uh, you know, imagined uh, in order to have this test with several options. <laughs> Um, then I have all the transcription here of your video. I can change the page. Here is a glossary with all the words that I need to understand for understanding the whole content. You see? Then um, I have these concept cards. So I can guess what the um, chronic hepatitis C infection prevalence is. Then I can uh, have my questions. There are uh, many and in different ways. And this one, for example, is filling with the missing word. Um, true or false. And uh, um, you see, there are there are many there are many possibilities. Um, I can drag the word also. Um, I don't know which one is this, but by the way, I go try and check. You see, I can see the solutions also in order to learn. Um, these are flashcards. So questions that I can guess the answer. These are the key points of my video and the summary. Now you see that this is short actually because the video is short itself 
But if you imagine to have a longer video, um, these really summarize a lot what I need to learn. And at the end, I have a summary with the score and so on, uh, how many interactions they made, uh, how, how good I was. Um, now let's uh, go and create. Okay, so we showed uh, how it works in Ilias. As you have seen, um, it's, uh, the process is very fast. From starting from a video or a PDF or uh, a text that I copy pasted into the, um, the plugin I'm using in Ilias, same works on Moodle. Uh, you can really get in a couple of minutes uh, uh, a content which is uh, interactive, uh, engaging, uh, um, and also enriched with information uh, that I understood from the context of the video. Uh, so for this reason, you may only you may also need uh, some kind of uh, uh, suggestions about how to make your e-learning videos. So in this case, uh, it's better if. Uh, uh, it's more descriptive or, uh, you know, there are there are some suggestions that can help to have a better result uh, at the end of the process. Uh, also, uh, in the in the video I showed you, uh, there were just a, a, a few languages, but now there are more. Would you please remind us, Philippe, in which languages can be used the uh, um, Knowledge AI at the moment? Yeah, currently Knowledge AI supports seven languages. So there is English, French, Italian, German, Spanish, Portuguese, and Dutch. Great. Uh, how does uh, uh, Flip uh, Knowledge AI adapt to different types of static content? For example, uh, as we've seen the video, but also audio, text, documents, websites uh, to create these interactive learning experiences? Yeah, sure. Um, so within the product, there is a lot of scrapper, parser, speech to text converter to be sure that we are extracting the raw text for, from every source because we are start working on the text uh, as an all generative AI tool. Uh, then <coughs> we are using large language model, so which is a mix from open source model and commercial model from OpenAI or Mistral AI to analyze this raw text and extract the concept, retrieve the definition, generate question, generate distractor, summary key points, so everything that you, you have shown. Uh, to, to, to make it easier to use and even in the corporate world, for example, we will also include in the next version access to Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive, so that, that's something that would be uh, easier to, 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 to select the file as a source. Uh, what are some of the challenges that you have faced in developing an AI and how you address them to ensure its effectiveness and reliability? Yeah, so actually we, we start knowledge AI before the hype of sharp GPT and large language model. As I remember at the beginning, we, my prototype is early 2020. Uh, at that time, the state of the art uh, network was uh, called a uh, transformer model. And the name was BART, uh, T5, uh, Prophet, uh, and so on. And we had to fine tune them uh, based on data sets that we have created to, to do the question generation, to do the summary, and so on. But it was, I would say, just OK in English, but we were not able to have other language because this transformer has not been trained like the large language model on multilingual. Um, so at the end of 2022, uh, when ChatGPT released the public version, but we were already uh, working with them a little bit earlier, uh, we switched to a large language model in order to get a prompt uh, in every language, so the seven that I mentioned, uh, to get the most accurate result for each task. So the, um, that was, I would say, the, um, the challenge we faced at some point. We have to get rid of our own development that was just okay and switch to state of the art that are available on the market to be sure that the product itself shine. I would say. So. What, depend, what impact does knowledge AI have uh, on knowledge retention and engagement? <clears throat> yes, yeah, so that, that, that was a choice that has been uh, deliberated uh, and uh, done since the beginning. It's too. Uh, not reinvent the wheel and to focus on something that has been proven to be very effective, 
by using the H5P format. So H5P, it's, I think it's 10 years old or maybe a little bit more, but it's open source. And because of that, it has been studied by a lot of uh, cognitive or neuroscience labs uh, worldwide. And they have demonstrated that uh, all this interaction that uh, Ilario show you, like flashcard, quizzes, drag the world, and so on, um, increase the engagement of the learner by 85%. And more importantly, I would say the retention of the lesson by the learner by 75%. Actually, it's really cognitive science. Uh, you learn more when you fail. And so you need to practice. Uh, and to do all this practice, you need to have exercise, whatever it's called, a flashcard to do it in your head or to have a real quiz or whatever. And because you fail, you learn why you fail and you, you get, uh, you start memorizing it. So that, that, that was uh, the key point. Um, of course, not all LMS are not supporting H5P. So uh, Moodle is supported natively. I think we need a, a plugin for Elias to support H5P. Correct. Uh, if there is other LMS that are not uh, supporting H5P, Actually, we just package or wrap the H5P package into a SCORM 1.2 on 2004 package. So we, we get the same user experience for the learning package, but just for the uh, pack, uh, standard that is widely supported like SCORM. So. Great. Can, uh, can you share any success stories or case study that demonstrates the positive outcomes of implementing knowledge AI in educational or corporate training settings? Uh, so yeah, I have example uh, in the corporate world. It was, um, the, for example, we are now having a pilot with brick construction, uh, which is, uh, um, uh, as I say, uh, multinational. Um, and they have a lot of um, small training, but they want to have this training in multiple languages. So uh, they are pleased that we are supporting at least seven languages. They want more, but currently we have only seven. Um, because they start with a single video and with the help of some external tools they are using, the video is a subtitle in every language. And we use that subtitle, not the audio part of the, uh, the video, but the subtitle to generate the courses uh, in the uh, seven languages. So that, that, that's one of the... Uh, a uh, new feature or key point uh, that has been piloted with uh, a multi -corporation, multinational corporation. Um, otherwise, in the academic world, we have been surprised to see uh, a teacher uh, endorsing the tool and doing something that we do not thought at the beginning, but it will be part of the next release. It's to be able to um, to loop back and forth in the review process, generating activity, review process, generating activity, uh, just by selecting different set of questions with different difficulties and to be able to create uh, different quizzes at different level to, to cope with the, the fact that the, within the class, they have the different students with different level of expertise. Uh, and from the same source documents, it generates three, uh, three level of exercise, I would say. And that's a feature that will be also released in the next version that you will be able to select which difficulty level, which readiness level you want to have for the exercise that we generate. Great. Uh, so before the last questions, we are uh, now running a little bit late, but I want to invite the participants uh, to, to ask any questions they have. Um, so we will uh, uh, ask uh, to Philip and uh, we'll have uh, we'll have an answer. So the last question, Philip, that I have for you is, uh, what does the future hold for Knowledge AI in terms of new developments, partnership, and it, in general, its role of shaping the future of interactive learning? So, yes, so we are working currently to the next version of the product. So, as you have seen of the demo, um, we use a single source document as a ground truth to generate this activity. Uh, so, it's already a big gain for teacher or instructional designer. Uh, we estimate 50 times faster or 50 times cheaper, just because, as Hilario said, it's just a matter of one or two minutes to get all that six done, especially the interactive video, which really it is really time consuming if you do it by hand. But in the Knowledge V2, scheduled for the uh, spring 2004, so in two, three months, um, we will go a step further and we will create a course from scratch, but 
uh, starting. Um, so we will create the course structure uh, and the course material with just the learning objective you have in mind, some keywords and a knowledge corpus. So a set of documents uh, that you have you select uh, and you want to be become the reference for the, the course that you will create. And the tool will propose you a plan first, a lesson plan. And if you agree with the plan, it will write the, the text for you. Um, and later on, we will most likely turn it into a slideshow. So that, and, and from that, we will generate all the interactive activity, as you know today. So that, that's really the next step to, to be able from multiple documents uh, to generate the full course material. Actually, maybe some of you are going to bet in London in, at the end of the month. So we have a booth on Business France uh, uh, booth. We have a stand uh, and that's where we will be able to demonstrate this new uh, feature uh, of uh, course creation from scratch with uh, using just a learning objective and uh, knowledge corpus. So feel free to yes. stop by. If you if you can you need you need, really need to to go to the booth and and ask. So um, we have our first question. Is it uh, it says it is possible to load among the txt a library of images in order to create a video that is uh, an animation of text and images. So that's something we are working on. It's not yet available, but that's something we want to do as a to extend the course creation and to make it more. Um, uh, engaging visually, I would say. Uh, so to be able to generate the slideshow uh, from image and text, yeah, sure. Mm. Um, OK, I'm going to ask, uh, read the other question, which is, uh, um, OK, it says, uh, from what I understand, the course must necessarily have an initial text. Um, yes, but Philippe, would you please answer? So actually, with the current version, yes, because um, again, it's it's a deliberate choice to be sure that the AI is focusing on the your document as a ground truth, and to not invent anything, to look at the right uh, language level and so on. But with the next version, you may have a, a mix of PDF video talking about uh, uh, hydrogen engine, for example. Uh, and you want to build a course from that, you will ask the Knowledge AI to generate a course plan based on some of the keywords to be sure that you want to focus on this topic first and maybe with some learning objective. And from the piece of text or whatever it has been transcribed from audio to video to, or video to text, it will propose you some text material uh, as a course. You will be able to edit it or accept it. And if you are pleased with that, that will become the, the entry for what you have seen today. So the fact that we will generate questions and quizzes and so on. So you will get uh, everything packaged um, on the hydrogen uh, engine um, just by asking the uh, knowledge AI to build the course for you. Yeah. Uh, can the tool accept a predefined dictionary of keywords that should never be reinterpreted by the system? So th that's something uh, which is uh, key and mandatory for corporate business. Uh, so that's something we are discovering and implementing for brick construction, for example, because every corporation has its own uh, vocabulary, I would say, and own acronym, uh, a lot of them. So we have to uh, teach the AI that these are acronyms that don't, don't try to find something similar on your model or on the, on the net. So that's, yes, so that's something that will um, be implemented in the product for cooperation. Yeah. Um, uh, another another participant say ask. Uh, um, I saw you uh, that also support media streams. Uh, are there any restrictions? Uh, for example, meme type, meme type. I'm not sure I got the full question. You say what at the beginning? Um, uh, it says that uh, knowledge support also media streams. Uh, if there are uh, any restrictions. So we, 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 are, we are supporting video services like YouTube, Vimeo, Vistia, uh, or you have to upload your own MP4 as uh, Hilario did for the demo. Uh, but we do not do that in live uh, with uh, streaming video services. I don't know if it was a question, but uh, uh, and for the video, maybe that, that's the point. The video should be one hour maximum. Uh, otherwise, anyway, one hour, it's already too big for micro learning. 
So I would, uh, most of our customer, uh, I think 80% of the video are around 10 minutes, uh, just because it's make more efficient for learning compared to one hour classes where it, that's where you lose the attention of the learning. It's too long. Um, so yes. How is uh, the copyright of the content created by knowledge? <clears throat> so we do not own the co what, of, what is created. It's uh, still uh, your, your property and you have to take care of the uh, copyright of the source material, uh, but it's the same if you are using PowerPoint or uh, whatever sure. word. You, if you copy paste something that do, do not belong to you, you are responsible for that, not me, Microsoft. So that's the same with us. And what has been generated, it's up to, it belongs to you and you use it in your LMS. Or in the... That's very important. Um, another one ask, uh, uh, what is uh, the final result when uploading just text? So it's mostly the same, uh, but just without the video, right, Philip? Yeah. Yes, you, you will have the same uh, activities except the interactive video, but uh, you will, if you upload a PDF, for example, you will see the PDF as a, you will be able to browse the PDF, of course, but then there will be all the exercise that has been demonstrated by Hilario. Uh, yeah. So, it's, uh, so the, the glossary, the quizzes, yeah. uh, um, crosswords, so general gamification activities, so everything, uh, but not the video itself. Uh, once the video is uh, created in one language, does it automatically generate versions in other uh, available languages? No. Um, currently, no. Um, that's uh, some requests we get, for example, with Bouygues. So actually, with Bouygues, are, they are building the, uh, the subtitling with an external tool. Actually, they are doing the process many, as many times as there is language. So. They are asking for three language, uh, but you, you pass the original video, which may be in French, and you get the uh, Spanish version, Italian version, English version, but you run three times in the modem. Yeah. Okay. Um, how uh, we have <laughs> really lots of questions. Uh, how can I work? Uh, um, one participants ask, how can I work with initial results? Can I make additions or corrections manually? And where does the plugin get its media assets from? So media asset, I guess, on Dario, you can answer, but it's from the media push or, or filias or Moodle. Um, so in the plugin interface, uh, the review step is important because uh, I don't remember, maybe you can answer it, but I'm not sure you can review the process again or regenerate the activity. Maybe you can. Uh, you can, yes, yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, so, so you can, you can start to so there the, is, the there process. There is a capability to, yeah, sorry. The, so the, the, the same in our native user interface. Uh, once it's generative, if you are not pleased with the results, you can just click on the pen on, on, our, on our own interface and you go back again to the concept definition, the question uh, selection with answer and the distractors and summary and you regenerate the activity. Uh, yes. And that's how the teacher is doing multi-level uh, uh, quiz, for example, because we generate maybe 40 questions. So they make a package of 10 of them, which are easy. They generate the activity, download the activity and upload to the LMS. And then they redo the exercise with the next 10 more difficult questions and so on. So you are really free to uh, to correct uh, many times if needed. Um, another question is, uh, how uh, are minor content modifications handled in the case of error updates? As we just said, you can review the contents by yourself. I mean, you cannot yeah. change the initial source, um, but you can um, go and change the text of the questions, answers, uh, H5P yeah. activities, the number of uh, the kind of activities you have. So you can really go and change the things, uh, but they will anyway start from the initial content you first yeah. of all uh, input in the knowledge system. Th that's why the transcription review is a key point, uh, because that's only um, where you will be able to fix uh, some acronyms, some last names that may be complicated and not spelled correctly, uh, because once you start to send the transcription to the AI, then you cannot go back to uh, the new transcription. So you have to be sure that the initial transcription is correct. Or if you um, go back to the transcription, it will be uh, 
uh, redoing a full analysis, so it would be new activities and so on. Uh, the question is, uh, uh, can I generate the course from a video without uh, voice speaking and text just from a 3D rendering video that explains, for example, an installation process of a device? No, the, the key here is the audio part in the video, which uh, is uh, um, uh, translated to text, so uh, audio to text. And from that text, uh, the elaboration starts uh, and you, you, you get uh, all the activities you have seen in the demo. Um, last questions, because we are really out of time now. Uh, would it be possible uh, to elaborate uh, on how the initial process uh, takes place? For example, prompt management. Uh, I am not clear on the process starting from the pure input entered. Um, not sure I got the question, but... Um... So actually, the AI uh, large language model is in, is used by prompting correctly. With you specify what task you are expecting, uh, well, what is the output uh, format that you are expecting. You have to give the context of the document. So that's why you put the uh, text that is extracted from the transcription or from the PDF. Uh, and you have given clear instruction. So th that's what we call prompt engineering, and that makes the, uh, I would say, secret source of all the tasks. Uh, and depending on the model you use, you don't get the same result. So that, that, that's, uh, uh, I would say, the, uh, the process that we are building. Uh, and we have a team of teachers, because it was the early adopter in the Discord group, that help us to uh, be to check that we have having the right questions, the right level of uh, distractors, and so on. So that's a really iterative and empiric process, unfortunately. But um, and it's a never-ending story because there is new model every day. <laughs> so. Um, so uh, I think so. If you have any other questions, please uh, um, write me a line by email, and I'll be able to answer or uh, or also ask Philippe Send for more. Well, yeah. Yes. No problem, yeah. um, in the in the meanwhile, um, we have a, a discount for you participants. Um, so. Uh, the, no, the, the both the plugins, uh, so the uh, Ilias plugin and the Moodle plugin are released uh, as free and open source um, under the G general public license. Uh, so you only need uh, to buy the uh, knowledge uh, license. Uh, in order to start working on your LMS. And uh, for you, we have uh, a 10% discount uh, for the Knowledge Yearly License. Of course, this uh, is valid until the end of January 2024. Uh, would you like to add something, Flip? No, no, that's okay. So um, the, the, the Yearly License is a little bit depending on how big is your corporation or your uh, educate academic uh, based on the number of teacher based on the number of uh, so that, that will, discussion that we will have to set up the price and then there will be this 10 percent discount yeah. so, perfect um, thank you thank you very much anyone for participating um let's meet again at the next uh, e-learning talk thank you philippe for uh, for the interview it was a very interesting and we had a really lot of questions so great uh, thank you all and have a great day bye thank you Ilario, for organizing the, the webinar and bye bye to everyone bye <laughs>